I'm Tony Kornheiser. Nope, nope. ESPN2 show. Nope. Uh, nope. Must be bowl season. We're relegated. Yeah. Bowl I understand season. that. Yeah. A lot of people love to watch live bowl games. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm going to one later like this them. week. I'm going to so attend one. Go. There you go. I assume Northwestern is in it. Yes, Las Vegas Bowl, baby. Hit the table, oh, stay up all night. Maybe not. Good for you. Great atmosphere for your kid. <laughs> Welcome to PTI, boys and girls. In today's episode, the Ravens top the Jaguars. The Chiefs hand another loss to Bill Belichick. And Brock Purdy says Christian McCaffrey is the MVP. But we begin today with the Buffalo Bills at home yesterday, drilling the Cowboys 31-10. Josh Allen only threw for 94 yards because the Bills ran for 266 yards. They ran 49 times. They'd still be running if the game was still going on. Wilbon, what does this result say about the Bills and the Cowboys? Well, Tony, the Bills did something they were supposed to do. They are supposed to win that game. I mean, all summer and into the fall, at least several weeks, we heard about the Bills, and they're supposed to be able to challenge Kansas City and finish even, if not ahead of Baltimore, and Bills, Bills, Bills. I mean, the Bills are supposed to be a team. They got a terrific That's quarterback. Right. They got a complete team, or so we thought. They had some hiccups, and all of a sudden, people just sort of dismissed them. I didn't dismiss them. They should win yesterday's game. And to me, this, this entire approach to their offensive philosophy of playing power football is better than throwing it all around the yard 40 times, which I don't understand Buffalo doing. So Buffalo did what they were supposed to. Everybody is going to dramatically and wildly overstate how this is the end of the Cowboys as if they just didn't win five straight. They won five straight. They lost in Buffalo where they were supposed to lose. So that's what it says to me. The Cowboys get another week to sort of pull themselves back together. It wasn't single elimination yet. And Buffalo gets to rally a little bit, at least for now. Let me just get one thing off my chest early. It was 31-3. to three. There were four minutes left in the game, and Dak Prescott was out there. Passing. Yes, what, are you doing? what was What that? in God's name is he doing yes, on the field you. in those circumstances? All you can do insane. is get hurt. That, that's crazy. Yes. Now, I don't, I don't want to overreact, and I don't want to overstate, but I'll, I'll say this. What does it tell me about the Cowboys? It tells me in any reasonable person they're not a good road team. They're 3-4 and four on the road. They're 7-0 and oh at home. Mike, they score 18 fewer points a game on the road than they do at home. Yeah. So to me, if they don't beat Philadelphia in the division, then I don't see them as a long-term threat in the playoffs. And what does it say to me about Buffalo? I'm going to go back a couple of weeks, and I'm going to concede that they shouldn't have beaten the Chiefs, that that touchdown that was called back would right. have beaten them. Right. But they did beat the Chiefs on the road in Kansas City, and then they beat Dallas convincingly at home. And so to me, Mike, if they can get in the playoffs, and they're not in the playoffs right now. No, but, but they're if they can out. get in the playoffs, I don't think you necessarily want to face them. And right. Dallas's problem, this was a blueprint on how to beat Dallas. Their front four, and in fact, their whole front seven, got pushed around Power physically. Football. They got to they gotta change that. Power they football. They got to change that. Because, you know, guess yeah. what? Uh, the Eagles can play that way, and the 49ers can play that way, too. And so, yeah, that's, right. yeah, that's something to keep an eye out for. But I mean, it, otherwise, it'll be overstated for the rest of the week about the Cowboys losing. The Ravens stayed atop the AFC. Lamar Jackson ran for 97 yards, passed for 171, including 26 after this impossible escape from a sack to lead the Ravens past the Jaguars in Jacksonville. Tony, what does this win say about the Ravens and Lamar Jackson to you? Well, first, I'm going to tell you what it says to me about the Jacksonville Jaguars, that they are posers, okay? Yeah, they're not ready you yet. Circle, they're not ready you yet. circle the date on this game. This is a home game. You beat the Ravens at home. You're a real team. And instead, they scored seven points. I think the week before, they lost to Cleveland, a team that yeah, doesn't score very yet. much, yeah. with a second-string quarterback. Before later. that, they lost to Cincinnati, another team with a second-string quarterback. So they're sort of frauds. And all of the talk over the last two weeks about how they could be the AFC number one seed, nope. that's just nonsense, nope. and I don't want to hear it. Now, in terms of Lamar Jackson and the Ravens, I will just talk briefly about the Ravens. They have a really good defense. Yeah. It may not be as star-filled as it was when they won championships, but it may be as good. They lead the NFL in points allowed, 16 points a game. 
They held the Jaguars to seven. They held the Lions to six. They held the Seahawks to three. They held the Browns to three. And, Mike, that's how you win in this league. Still, yes, it is, Tony. With that deep, when you've got that defense, and you mentioned first in points allowed, second in yards allowed, and you got Lamar Jackson. And by the way, Lamar Jackson wasn't seen on the field in the last two Decembers because he was injured. And he's aware of it. He talked, you know, very persuasively to me in his post-game remarks about being able to play in December and being himself. And he looked like both that, both those things yesterday, very healthy and like himself. So if Lamar Jackson can be kept upright, all right, and that that offense can play power football too, and you have that defense keeping you in check, keeping everybody in check, keeping playoff teams that you just listed in check, then Baltimore to me, not Kansas City, Baltimore to me is the number one seed, the primary threat in the AFC right now. That's how I feel about them, Tony. And Jacksonville, look, I'm not going to dog them. It's not their time yet. It could have been if they cashed in with two of those victories. But, Tony, I I didn't think they would or should win those games. Jacksonville's a year away. They'll seem to get themselves together. They're well coached. I still like their quarterback. I like a lot of what Jacksonville's going on. They're not Baltimore, not yet. I'm going to point out one thing to you, and I know what you're saying vis-a-vis the Chiefs, but Lamar Jackson, who was a wizard on the field, yes, and he's not only healthy, he's happy because his contract is behind him. <laughs> that too. <laughs> but he's been terrible in the playoffs, Mike. Okay. He's one Here's and three one. in the playoffs with three yeah. touchdown passes and five interceptions and two lost fumbles. Now, greatness shows itself eventually, yep. but he, he hasn't been like the Chiefs guy in the playoffs. He has not. After the 49ers handily beat Arizona yesterday, 45-29, 49er quarterback Brock Purdy said Christian McCaffrey should be the MVP. McCaffrey had 115 yards rushing and a touchdown, 72 yards receiving and two touchdowns. He has 20 touchdowns this season. That's tied for number one in the league. Wilbon, are you with Purdy? Not exactly, Tony. Look, look, McCaffrey's great. All right, he's got a coach who knows what to do with him. So all these morons around the league and and some of them coaching in it who want to tell you running backs, they don't need them. Running backs are passe. Why would you want a running back? Maybe if you know how to use one, all right? Christian McCaffrey is used well by Coach Shanahan in San Francisco. And when your name is up there with Marshall Falk, all-purpose running, catching, scoring, doing everything, and Roger Craig... It, don't tell me that running backs are passe. Shut up. But no, I'm going to take Mr. Purdy for my MVP. Great for him that he spreads it around and says, my teammate, give it to my teammate. Brock Purdy. Brock Purdy is my MVP. People can talk about Dak. They can talk about this quarterback. They can talk about that quarterback. Purdy. What's Purdy done? I know he had a three-game losing yeah. streak, but McCaffrey had that too. That's right. Purdy is my yeah. MVP right now, today. Yeah. I don't vote, but if I did vote, I think I would vote for Purdy as well. All of last year and most of this year, I was on Jalen Hurts. He's sort of fizzling lately. I might look at Dak Prescott, but that's not a vote I'd make after yesterday. After yesterday, uh-uh. as you say, as you say, Purdy had a three-game bad streak, but that was a while back. He leads all quarterbacks in rating at 119. He has the most touchdown passes in the league, 29. He has the most yards per attempt. He's second to Tua in pass completion percentage and total passing yards. But I would tell you, Mike, that San Francisco has played a much tougher schedule than Miami to this point. You know me well enough to know that it, it, I love running backs, but I am seduced by quarterbacks. I'm not going to knock running backs. I may overvalue quarterbacks. That, that's possible. But, Mike, I'm, I'm in line with the rest of the league. I believe Adrian Peterson is the last running back to get it. In 2012, and before that, it was 2006. And I, I do like McCaffrey to this degree. Mike, what a stupid trade by Carolina. But it, Equal it, it, to it, their it, it stupidity in trading DJ Moore. Yeah. That's why they stink, because they don't know yeah, what they're doing. They made some tough trades, Tony. But, I, but, I, but listen, let's give Shanahan the big double thumbs up. Oh, For knowing sure. a weapon, knowing what he's going to do with them, not caring what the rest of the stupid league thinks. Huh? What? People he's better got, open he's their got eyes. Four offensive weapons. players weapons, who baby. can score from anywhere on the field on yeah. any play. He's got four of them. Let's take a break. 
Coming up, did the Chiefs make a convincing case that they're back on track? Mm. Did the Lions or the Bengals post a bigger win Saturday? Yeah, By the way, do you know do you know Christmas Day, I believe, it's Ravens at 49ers? You gonna watch that? I'm no. gonna watch that. No. Purdy no. and Jackson, what are you gonna be doing? Working, entertaining the masses on A B C. Pardon the interrupts. Did the Chiefs convince you that they're back on track? No. Well, how can the Chiefs convince you of anything yesterday? They played the Patriots. And I know New England's defense has been not just representative, it's been competitive for several weeks. So you go, okay, I'll take their defense, but the team isn't. The team is as close to choosing first overall in the upcoming draft as anything else. I mean, they're near the bottom, they're in it. They're only a game away from that distinction. So don't, I don't want to hear about, about beating the Patriots, no matter where you beat them. I don't want to hear about that. I don't want to hear about, you know, what's his name's girlfriend. I didn't I, 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 no. The Kansas City Chiefs were not a story yesterday. They haven't convinced me of anything by beating a homecoming opponent. Yeah, I hate to do this, but I'm going to agree with you down the line. Good. You, you prove nothing by beating the Patriots and Bailey Zappi. They stink. They're 3-11. and 11. They have the worst offense in all of football. They only get 13 points a game. So not only don't you gain anything by beating them, you actually would lose terribly if you lost to them. Now, where you and I disagree is on the next phase of this. You think the Chiefs' problem on offense is Matt Nagy, and I think the Chiefs' problem is dropping the ball. All right? They went into yesterday's game leading the league in drops with 34. I think they had four more yesterday. Travis Kelsey has four drops. Kadarius Toney has four drops. I think Mahomes is putting it in their hands, yeah, and they're mm-hmm. dropping it. I think they're a pretty good team if they, they catch the ball. But I agree with you that you prove nothing no. by beating New England. No. no. And, and, so. and Tony, you can have more. Look, when an offense like theirs is scoring 17 and 19 and one of those at home, you have more than one thing that can be true. They do That's have true. drops. They have too many. I'm still going to take Tony, and Nailed I'm going to take this. What's, his, what's her name's boyfriend, I'm still going to have him on my team, Travis Kelsey. But something's yeah. wrong with the offense, too. I know, you, so, you know, yeah, but some of you don't want to go there. With, and I'll your go dislike there. for go there. Uh, Patrick Mahomes and the, the Chiefs is obvious. No, I don't have any it dislike just, for them. It None. Leaves, it, there's venom None. when you talk about like them. Like Patrick Mahomes. More significant win on Love Saturday, the Lions or the Bengals? The Bengals. The Bengals are in a dogfight. The Lions aren't. The Lions have no competition. The Packers now can't win. The Bears, who, who should have eight wins, don't, and five, because they've blown three games in the fourth quarter with double-digit leads, and that's just in that's right. the last month or so. So the Vikings are good. There's no competition. The Lions can do what they do. They're in fine. The Bengals are in a dogfight, both in their division and for wild card, if they can do that. I mean, I know Pittsburgh is sort of floundering, but they're still there. Obviously, Baltimore is. Cleveland Gets away with one yesterday. So the answer is the Bengals. Yeah, I'm glad that we reached this point in the show where I can sincerely disagree. I think the more significant win was the Lions for this reason. They were sort of tumbling. They'd lost two out of three, and they'd lost two out of three in division. They needed a big comeback. They got it. I believe they won 42-17. We may have thought that Denver had turned it around and was a good team. They're not a good team. Where I will agree with you is that I think the most significant development in the entire league is the Cincinnati Bengals. Yes. When Joe Burrow went out, a lot of us, Browning, including me, baby. said they have Browning. no chance. So wherever they got Jake Browning from, they ought yeah, to not erect Browning. a historical marker at that point. He's 3-1 and one with this team. They were down 17-3 to three in this particular game. And I'll tell you, and I know you didn't watch the game because I told you about this the other day. I think the touchdown by T. Higgins is the single greatest play I saw all year. What he did with it's his great. body and that, moved the ball that, over the pylon. That, it was great play. Uh, great. The best play I've seen. And why Minnesota ran that kid yeah. Mullen into the line twice in a row where was he ridiculous. just lost yardage. What are you insane. doing? They're not any right? good. What are you That's doing? That's why Detroit could just Detroit can limp to the finish now. There's no resistance from the three teams in the division. None. Yeah, but they needed a win. They, they I mean, did. they were going the other way, they Mike. Needed. And, they, and their history indicates if they don't get the win, they're back. Nobody they're back them. in the dumpster the where they've been for 60 years. Can't get up. Enough email. 
Let's take one last break. Still to come, the Bears came so close to making Will Bond happy. And then, what are you talking about? They made me happy. Uh, I'm happy. Well, and will it yeah, change the defensive the play callers pick. get the Eagles back to their winning ways tonight? I, I, I don't need a win to go five and or six and nine or six and eight and people phonally say they're going to make the plus. I don't need that. I want a draft pick. A crowded field of outstanding hitters, including Mookie Betts, Freddie Freeman, and Matt Olson. Acuna led all of baseball in hits, runs, stolen bases, and on-base percentage. He became the first person ever to top 40 home runs and 70 stolen bases in the same season, going 41 and 73. Acuna led the NL in OPS at 1.012, second in batting at 337, and he scored 149 different times. He was Rookie of the Year in 2018. He's gotten better over time. Acuna is signed through 2026, but with the Braves holding club options the following two years, he would not become a free agent until 2029. Tony, that's a big boy season. That's not some phony, baloney, overly praised season by, you know, analytics-obsessed baseball writers, which is what they now often do with Cy Young. Pulled off the rare attempt of a step-back three in which he actually took three steps Look at without dribbling. Like he was four. inside the three-point line. He wanted to be outside the three-point line, so he just stepped back of his own free will. And nobody called it on him. I mean, seriously, if the refs don't call That's walking four on this, steps. what will they call it on? Watch this again. Count his steps. Four. In the NBA, One, there is two, no walking. Three. There are drop four, steps. Maybe five. Crab steps. There are Euro steps. You can take as many as you want. A ref has to hate you personally to call walking. That was so aggressive. comical. I mean, that's the instructional video for anybody who wants to referee from bitty ball on up. Don't let anybody do this. Oh, yeah. This time they were up 17-7 on Cleveland, and they let 85-year-old Joe Flacco throw for 212 yards in the fourth quarter alone, including a 51-yard touchdown to Amari Cooper that tied the game at 17. The Browns then went ahead on a 34-yard field goal with 32 seconds left. The Bears had a last chance on a Hail Mary. Justin Fields got it to the end zone, where it was batted down into the hands chest. of Bears wide receiver hands Darnell Mooney, laying on his back. Mooney could not hold Love on. Mooney, the ball deflected into the air where DeAnthony Bell intercepted it. How do you feel about that? Uh, better than winning the game. Well, I'm serious. So we catch a Hail Mary pass, and that's supposed to be right. worth moving down in the draft? Three, two, three, four spots it could wind up leading to? No. No, that win is not going to mean anything when we hope the Bears are good this time next season and beyond. So, no, there's no maybe happy trails. There's nothing like that. After the initial anger of him not holding on to it and wanting to win the game in the right. moment, you go, no, we don't need this. Think, think, How about calm Cleveland down. being 9-5? and five? Cleveland wins games by defense, 1, 2, and defense, 3 points. Defense, Tony, they got a great defense. And how about Joe Flacco? He's 38. Yeah. He didn't three play picks. last year, right? Should have been four picks. Uh, three picks, but he it's won terrible. the game at the end. Yeah. You know, mm. he won the game at the end. Mm. I mean, they're on their third or fourth quarterback now. Yeah, they are. They're, Good for them. Defense. They're very impressive. Like Baltimore. They're they got a great impressive. defense. Same division. All right. We're running out of show. We go to the big finish. Let's Bernard do it. Longer in the Sun won the PNC, and Tiger and Charlie finished fifth, which is the bigger deal. Bernard Longer, period. And his son, fine. More worldwide wins than people know over a longer stretch of time. He's 66 years old. He can still go out there and beat you. They know the longest. Let's give them some credit. Tiger, we always give credit. And Charlie, good for them. Baker Mayfield had a perfect passer rating and a win over the Packers. Are you impressed with that? I am. It's on the road. Yeah. I mean, he's having a good year. They're having a good year. They're in first place. A bad division, but they're in first place. Give them a little bit of credit. The Carolina Panthers finally won, beating the Falcons. I'm sure you're disappointed. Angry. I don't want to see Carolina winning. We've got their pick. It's still overall number one. We're still in that slot. We got the Cardinals and the Patriots gaining. Uh, yeah, I'm nervous. Eagles, Seahawks tonight. You smelling a third straight loss for Philly? No, they need to win, and they will win. Last one, will the Pistons snap their 23-game losing streak tonight at the Hawks? No. And they're by themselves now, Tony. The Spurs finally won to beat the Lakers Friday, but then subsequently lost. Pistons, I'm afraid, it may last a while. Every day, the Pistons. Every day. 
We're out of time. Trying to do better the next time. I'm Tony Kornheiser. I'm Mike Wilbon. Same time tomorrow, Knuckleheads. You can get us on the ESPN app, Apple Podcasts, Apple everything. But now, there's SportsCenter.